What's up YouTube? Today we're reviewing the 2022 Ford F250 XLT. Huge thank you to Greg Williams over at Coon Sterling Ford for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you're interested in this particular F250 or any Ford product, I'll have his information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and performance. In this particular F250 is painted in iconic silver. And uh, if you look at the paint in the sun, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but it's really, uh, it's a really nice color and it really glistens in the sun. It's nice metallic flake uh, to this paint color. But looking at the front end, you can see Super Duty embossed into the hood right there. Taking a look at the front grill, you have a chrome front grill with some black accents on top and inside of the grill. So it kind of makes it look like it's a chrome and black grill. I'm a fan of the way that the grill looks. I like these kind of nostril type things on both the right and left side. It's really cold out. You also have your big blue Ford emblem right up here. Halogen headlights as well as a halogen turn signal. You got your chrome front bumper with your halogen fog lights down here. Two tow hooks at the bottom of the front bumper as you can see right there. And you got your air dam down here as well. Moving along. And right down here, you have your 18 inch aluminum wheels with your manual lockers right there. They're wrapped in a Goodyear Wrangler tire that's actually uh, decently aggressive as you can see right there. And right back here, you have your off-road tuned front shock absorbers as well as your suspension right there. Like I said, 6.7 liter power stroke. You got your chrome trim around the XLT F250 right there, your side vent. At the top of the mirror cap, it is in chrome, as you can see, and these mirrors are power folding, and these mirrors are power extending, so if you have a big trailer at the back and your trailer is very wide, you can actually extend these via a button on the interior right here, which I'll show you. Chrome door handles. Opening it up, like I said, push this button, and the mirrors extend, just like that. That side does the same thing as well. Push the button again and they fold in. You can also push this button right here and they fold in just like that. That side does as well. Push the button again and they fold out. But we'll get to the interior here in a minute. You have chrome running boards on both the driver and passenger side. This is where your diesel tank is. Diesel def right there. Again, your off-road tuned rear shock absorbers back there. And this particular F-250 does have the FX4 off-road package. So you do see your FX4 decal right there that says FX4 off-road. The FX4 off-road package is a $400 option. And what you get with the FX4 off-road package is hill descent control. Like I said, you get the off-road tuned front and rear shock absorbers. You also get a transfer case. You get the skid plates down here. I'm not sure if the camera will be able to pick it up. And like I said, you also get that FX4 detail out back at the rear right here. Power sliding rear window right there. Blind spot monitoring right here in the tail light. These are halogen tail lights, but this is your blind spot monitoring system right here. Turn signal as well as your backup lights in there as well. Super Duty embossed into the rear tailgate right there, your Ford emblem, backup camera. You have this chrome tailgate handle right here, so open it up. And uh, you do not have a bed liner in this particular truck. However, you do have those cargo tie downs right in all four corners. And you also have these tie downs as well in all four corners right there. Tailgate step in the tailgate, it actually makes the tailgate uh, just a little bit heavier than if you do not get that option. But uh, if you have a hard time getting in and out of the bed and you're an older person or something like that, that's definitely an option you might want to get. Backup sensors right here. You also have your chrome bumper and your hitch receiver right here. Max tow capacity is 18,200 pounds and your max tongue weight is 1,820 pounds. You got your trailer lighting right here. And right here, this is to put your key in to unlock your spare tire so you can lower it uh, if you do get a flat on the road. So closing that. Got two tie down spots for your chains uh, with your trailer. Moving along, you have your exhaust outlet right there for that 6.7 liter power stroke. 
And uh, let's move into performance. This XLT F250 comes optioned with the 6.7 liter Power Stroke V8. That is a $10,495 option, and that makes 475 horsepower and 1,050 pound feet of torque. That all goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission uh, to all four wheels. However, this is a four wheel drive vehicle, not a two wheel drive vehicle. So if you have it in two wheel drive, then it goes to your two rear wheels. And this motor is actually very peppy. Uh, if you do go out and test drive one, you'll see what I mean. But this thing's able to do zero to 60 in 7.2 seconds. And like I mentioned, this does have four wheel drive. Close that hood right there. Very light hood, this is aluminum right there stepping on back this particular 2022 xlt has the xlt premium package for two thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and what you get with the premium package is chrome running boards fog lamps 18 inch wheels backup sensors which i showed you guys as well as heated front seats and an eight-way power driver seat so i'll show you guys that you also have cab lights right up there and that is a 95 dollar option these trailer tow mirrors are a $280 option. And I talked about that power sliding rear window. The power sliding rear window is a $405 option. Moving into the interior, again, chrome door handles right there. You also have your Ford keypad. So if you lock your keys in the car and you know uh, the pin to get into the vehicle, all you gotta do is type in your pin and you can get into the vehicle. One cool thing, uh, if you don't know how to lock one of these vehicles via this pad right here, all you got to do is push these two buttons and it'll lock right up. Stepping in, you can see you got your blind spot monitoring right at the top left hand corner of your mirror right there and at the top right hand corner of the mirror right there. You see these two buttons right here. These are your puddle lights. So I'll show you guys that here real quick. You got this little light right down here that shines uh, so it just gives you that much more visibility when you're walking to your vehicle at night you can see exactly what is right next to your driver door as well as what's right next to your passenger door so that's a really nice uh, feature right there I, I really like those puddle lights but moving over to your window switches right here you have automatic up and down windows in the front and but you do not have automatic up or down windows in the rear um, so that's just something to think about. You have a nice padded armrest right here. Uh, it's very, very comfortable for those long road trips. And you know, if you guys have seen any of my Ford videos in the past, uh, all their seats are very, very comfortable. This particular interior color is called medium earth gray. And uh, I actually really, really like this color. So uh, if you guys are interested in this particular color, like I said, medium earth gray. It's a really nice interior color. I think both of the colors uh, really complement each other very, very nicely, just to give it a little bit more of a premium feel uh, on the interior. But moving over to here, I'm gonna grab my Deer Park water bottle. And I'm gonna show you guys, you got a little water bottle storage space right there. Set my water bottle horizontally. You can see how much storage space is down in there for a tape measure, a little level, something like that. And you also have some more storage space back here as well, but it's definitely not as wide as the storage space right here. You can put like hand sanitizer or something right here if you so desire, uh, because that's about what it'll fit uh, down in there. Your unlock and lock buttons right here. You got your door handle right here. Uh, nice and chrome it's also got like some black plastic down there as well as this gray trim piece right here and you also have aluminum trim that surrounds that right there like I said unlock and lock button and uh, we went over the mirror controls right here to power fold the mirrors push that button right there to extend the mirrors outwards you push this to the left to bring them back in you push this to the right but step it in you do not have push button start, but you do have a point and stick key, which I'll show you guys right here. So as you can see, you do have remote start. So if you do want to remote start this vehicle, all you got to do is push this lock button once and then push this button right here twice and uh, it'll fire up from the exterior. But closing the door right there, push this button right here and the key pops out just like that. Put the key in the ignition, turn it and uh, fire up. And you can hear that 6.7 liter power stroke roar to life. It actually sounds very, very good. And when we get into the driving portion of the review, you guys will see just how quick this vehicle is. But uh, right over here, you got your fog lamp button. 
cargo light button. These buttons right here adjust the brightness of the screen as well as these backlit buttons here as well. You got your headlight switch. So right now we're in automatic. If you just want your headlights on, you can put it on that. If you just want your daytime running lights on, push that right there. And uh, if you just want the lights off, you twist it all the way to the left. But let's leave that in automatic. This does have adjustable pedals. So you see this little dial right here. So all you gotta do is push that button down and the pedals come towards you. Push that button from the top and the pedals go away from you. That is a $120 option. You do have a floor mounted parking brake right down here. So all you gotta do is push down like that and to release it, pull up like that. Like I said, these are for your puddle lights on the driver and passenger side. But to control this little screen right in here, you got this little pad right here. So up, down, left, right. Uh, so you can go to display mode, trip information, towing information, off-road, settings, stuff like that. You also have a couple different drive modes by pushing this button right here. You got normal, tow, haul, eco, slippery, as well as deep snow and sand. And obviously it says for improved performance, go into four wheel drive, but we're gonna put it back into normal mode. And if some of you guys are interested in how to put this behemoth in sport mode, come over to this traction control button, push once, push and hold a little bit, let go. And now you're in advanced track sport mode. So for those of you guys who want to put one of these vehicles in sport mode, uh, all you gotta do is push this button once, push and hold and let go. And that is how you go into sport mode. Uh, but I'm not sure how many of you guys are gonna put it into sport mode, but uh, we'll put it back into advanced track on. Right up here, you got your oil temperature, as well as your coolant temperature, fuel gauge right up here, as well as your turbo PSI gauge right there. You got an analog RPM gauge to the left, analog speedometer to the right, and you got that little productivity screen right there in the middle. As you can see at the bottom of the productivity screen, you can go into reverse, neutral, drive, and manual mode. And to switch gears into manual mode, I'm gonna put it back into park. All you gotta do is push this plus button to upshift, push this down button to downshift. Um, so yeah, if you're pulling a big trailer and you're going down a hill or something uh, and you wanna downshift the vehicle, all you gotta do, put it in M uh, and then push that down arrow right there. But if you want the vehicle to engine brake for you, you got this little button right there. You can put the engine brake on, push that button again. You can do automatic engine brake on, push that button again and the engine brake turns off. Right over here, like I said, traction control. You got your hazards right there. You got your hill descent control right here. We're gonna keep that off. And uh, you got your camera system right there. So you got that bed camera as well as your reverse camera. So all you gotta do to put your reverse camera on, throw her in reverse, and you can see you got your backup sensors right over there. It says we're good, we're close to something, but we're not too close to something, and that's why you can see it's in green. Uh, and you also have your little lines to show you exactly where the vehicle is gonna back up to. You can also zoom in on that. Uh, so if you're backing up to a trailer, you can do that. And I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but there's like these dotted lines that show you right exactly where the trailer hitch uh, is gonna line up to. So that's really nice when backing up to like a boat trailer uh, or an RV trailer, because let's be real. It seems like most of the people who buy fifth wheels or RV trailers seem to be buying power strokes. At least that's what I've observed. Um, there's gotta be a reason for it. And it's probably because that motor is a really strong and quick motor. But right over here, like I said, four wheel drive, you have a locking rear differential. As you can see right there, all you gotta do to do that is pull this little dial out. Right now we're in two high. You can go into four high as well as four low. Trailer brake control right here. Volume up, volume down right here as well as your two knob right over here. If you are connected to Apple CarPlay, um, you can go back on a song right there, forward on a song right there, and on your steering wheel right here, you've got your steering wheel controls for volume up, volume down, switch between different media between that uh, button right there in the middle to go back on a song, to go forward on a song. You can do that right there. To mute the radio, you can do that. To speak to the vehicle, you got this button right here. To end a call or to pick up a call, you got these two buttons down here. And like I said, this does have wired Apple CarPlay as well as wired Android Auto. This is the Sync 3 system. If you want wireless Apple CarPlay, you're gonna have to get the Sync 4 system, which comes with that beautiful 12 inch screen, which we've seen 
If you guys want to look back on my F350 Lariat video, you guys can see the SYNC 4 system. I'll link that video right here at the top right hand corner uh, for you guys. So if you guys want to check that video out, you can do so now. These buttons on top as well as on the bottom are for your FM stations or your Sirius XM station. So it memorizes which station uh, goes with each number. Climate control settings right down here as well as you got heated seats in this vehicle. That comes with the XLT premium package for that $2,995. You also have your 12 volt outlet as well as a 400 watt household outlet right there as well. Moving up here, you got a little bit more storage space. If you want to set like a tape measure or a little level up here, you can do so. Rear view mirror right up here, it is not auto dimming. And you've got your upfitter switches right here. You got six different ones. So to switch them on, push forward. And uh, you can see that they're activated because they turn like an amber type color to show you that they are on. So I think that's really cool. You also have your power sliding rear window by pushing this right there. Window goes open, go like that. Window closes. You got these two outer buttons right here. This turns on your LED interior light on your driver's side, LED interior light on your passenger side right there. Push that button again. This is to turn the lights off, totally off. So let's turn those lights on. This button is so if you open up the door, like I'll show you guys right here, open up the door right there, push this button and now the lights come on when the door is open. But if you push this button again, the lights do not come on when the door is open. But let's, let's leave that on because it's nice when the lights come on when the door comes open. But closing that, if you want to turn on all your dome lights, we'll wait for these to turn off. Push this button right here and then all your lights are on in the interior just like that. Closing that. You've got your sunglass holder right up here, which is awesome. Closing that. You got this visor right here. We'll slide that plastic over just a little bit, open her up. You do not have a light on your mirror, so uh, you do have to turn on this light if you do want to see yourself at night, but we'll close that. Uh, it's a nice huge visor right up here. So if you got uh, a lot of sunlight that's coming in your eyes, it's like golden hour or something and the light is shining right in your eyes. This is a nice big sun visor right here. So you should have no problems uh, with the sun blinding you at golden hour, like I said. Moving over to here, you see the Super Duty embossed into the top glove box. You got a little button right over here to press and then it'll open up your little glove box on top. Let me move my backpack right up here. And you got your glove box down here as well. You can also turn your passenger airbag off by sticking like a Phillips head or sticking a flat head in here and twisting to the left and you can turn your passenger airbag off. You got your space for your owner's manual right up here and as well as tons of storage space at the bottom uh, of your glove box right down here as well. If you wanna stick napkins or something like that, uh, you can do so. Closing that. 6.7 liter power stroke is coming on to high idle because it is very, very cold outside. As you can see, it's raising up RPM. So that's pretty cool, it does that by itself. Um, but yeah, moving down here, you got a USB-A as well as a USB-C port and a little bit more storage space down in there. Um, so it's a good size storage space down in there actually. Uh, you can fit one of these Deer Park water bottles in there horizontally or if you wanna stick your phone down in there, you can do that as well. But one thing I wanted to show you guys, if you're like, why does this truck only have two cup holders? I want it to have four. Slide this thing over just like that, and now you got four cup holders. So if you guys go to McDonald's, and you got two guys in the back, two guys in the front, you got more than enough space uh, in the front to hold all the drinks. But you don't really have to worry about that because back here, you got two cup holders for the people back here as well. But slide that back over and uh, you can set your phone in here or really you can set whatever you want it's actually a good sized uh, little center console right here um, but let me move this right over here move this out of the way and uh, let's open up that center console right down in there you got this little divider right here you want to set coins or something you've got gloves or something like that you can set all that right in here or you don't want that in there you can take that out uh, and set that you know in your garage or something like that but I feel like Fords have the biggest amount of storage space down in their center console that's just something that I've noticed so if you guys are looking for storage space in your center console you might want to look at a Ford but you also have a 12 volt outlet right down here as well um, so that's nice so if you want to charge your phone plug in a radar detector uh, you can do so put that little divider back in there 
and uh, like I said, these seats are very, very comfortable. These are not the leather seats, these are the cloth seats. But like I said, Ford has some of the most comfortable seats of any of the American brands. Just something that I found, maybe some people might disagree. If you disagree, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Uh, but definitely, I feel like the leather seats are a little bit more comfortable. They're definitely a little bit softer. Um, so if you're looking at seat comfortability, you might want to get the leather seats. It seems like they got a little bit more padding, but these seats are still very, very comfortable. One thing that I don't think I mentioned when we were talking about this Sync 3 screen right here is that you do have a navigation system, and that navigation system will run you $570. Um, yeah, that's just something that I did not add into the video. And uh, you also have a 4G LTE hotspot. You, like I said, you got your blind spot monitoring and this is an eight inch Sync 3 screen. Um, but one thing I don't think I mentioned when we were out back is that this does have the $375 tailgate step. As you can see, it's on high idle, so it sounds pretty loud. Uh, we gotta unlock those doors right there. Push the unlock button, now the doors are unlocked and you also have a locking tailgate as well. So when you lock the key fob, your tailgate locks as well. So if you got like a tonic cover, that's a locking tonic cover, uh, and you have like valuables in your bed, you do have a locking tailgate. So that's a really nice feature to have, uh, just to keep your stuff, your assets very safe and uh, a little bit harder for thieves to steal. Obviously, if thieves really want to steal your stuff, uh, they'll find a way to get it. But you know, it's nice just to have that, just to give them one more barrier in order to not be able to steal your stuff. But looking at this back door right here, you do not have any padding uh, on your armrest right here. It is like a softer vinyl type material, but no padding like you do in the front. Looking at this, again, same exact kind of material, uh, like a vinyl type material. You got your gray trim piece right here, followed by your aluminum trim around that gray trim piece. You got your little bit of aluminum trim on your door handle right there. And you also have your window switch right here as well. Like I said, no automatic up or automatic down. But little cup holder right here, so you've got a Deer Park water bottle, smart water bottle, stuff like that, it'll fit. Again, you wanna set hand sanitizer back here, you can do so as well. Uh, and you got a little bit more storage space down at the bottom of this door panel right here. Like I said, you got your chrome step right here, which really helps you get in because this is a tall vehicle. But closing that door. Two seat back pockets, both on the driver and the passenger side. Like I said, you've got your two cup holders back here, 12 volt outlet, USB-A, USB-C port right here. You also have a 400 watt max household outlet right there as well. But closing that, two HVAC vents right on the right and left side. And uh, these rear seats are also very, very comfortable. Um, you know, I could definitely see myself doing a long road trip back here, extending my legs all the way because there's just so much leg room in the back of this F-250 uh, and I'm adjusted behind myself. I'm five foot nine, so plenty of headroom here, plenty of leg room down there, and like I said, I'm adjusted behind myself. So that's just how much leg room uh, that I have here in this F-250. So if you're worried about leg room, definitely don't have to worry about leg room in this F-250. Um, but I'll show you guys what these seats look like. Same pattern as the front, you do not get a center fold down armrest in this particular truck. Uh, but let me step out and I'm gonna show you guys all the storage space that you have at the bottom of these seats. So let's fold these seats up. All you gotta do, pull this little tab right here, lift these seats up, super easy, they're very light. Uh, and it just reveals all this storage space down in here. So let me grab my iPhone 11 Pro Max just to show you guys how much storage space is down in there. So that is my phone and that just shows you guys just how big this storage space is down under these seats. So if you guys are wondering about storage space, you got plenty of it. And then this can also fold down. So if you want a total flat surface here, you can do that as well. This divider will fold down. So that's really, really nice. But uh, let's put these seats back down. So pull this tab again and the seats will fold down just like that. Um, but if you guys are enjoying today's video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys like most about this 2022 F-250 XLT. Let me know, would you guys get the XLT? Would you guys get the Lariat King Ranch? What is your favorite trim level? of the f-250 but i'd really appreciate if you guys would hit that subscribe button i'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers now we hit my 1,000 subscriber milestone that i've been wanting to hit for quite some time so to all you guys who have hit that subscribe button 
thank you guys so much i really appreciate it but now we're on to 10,000 subscribers so if you guys want to be one of those 10,000 subscribers like i said hit that subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up and i will see you guys in the driver's seat and now on to the driving portion of the review and i've done a few of these power strokes now i think this is the third one that i've driven um, and you know they all feel very similar they all behave kind of the same way and like I said when I was talking about the performance these things just perform extremely well they are so quick uh, the torque is insane on these motors like uh, and then sometimes like when you're accelerating you get a little bit of that turbo noise which sounds awesome uh, I would really like to hear one of these things deleted or drive one of these things deleted um, and I believe like if you guys are into like deleting uh, diesels or anything like that I know the EPA is definitely not into deleting diesels, but um, When you delete diesels, uh, I believe the power stroke is the cheapest diesel to delete. I believe it's like Fifteen hundred or three thousand dollars. So it's not too crazy expensive like the Duramax is uh, Like the new Duramax is the L5Ps those are really expensive to delete, I believe. Like I've seen between like $5,500 and $8,000 to delete uh, one of those motors. And I, I think Cummins is just right in between the two. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in like deleting one of these power strokes uh, and money's kind of an issue when it comes to deleting it, definitely you're gonna wanna look at the power stroke then because it's the easiest and the cheapest to delete. Uh, and it sounds great, it's super powerful. Uh, and there's a reason probably why, at least in my personal opinion, that most of the people who buy like big trailers uh, and like, especially fifth wheels I've noticed, um, they seem to buy power strokes the most. And I don't know if that's because, uh, maybe it's because the seats are some of the most comfortable seats out of the three major brands, uh, or because it's the motor, because it's just super powerful. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So if you guys like know the answer to that question, I've always been curious as to why everybody who buys like a fifth wheel or something like that buys a power stroke so if you guys are if you guys know the answer to that leave a comment in the comment section down below i kind of have my guesses uh between either the seats being the most comfortable because they really are some of the most comfortable seats i have to give uh dodge a chance because they are some of the most comfortable seats out of the three major american brands but you know also it's just a really really nice interior uh, especially if you get like a Lariat, a King Ranch, uh, obviously a Platinum or a Limited. Um, but if you guys are like wanting an interior that's like super nice, uh, plush, got your leather and that kind of stuff, you're probably not going to want to get an XLT. Um, however, if you just want something that's super comfortable, it's affordable uh, for what it is, you know, a lot of these trucks are getting really expensive nowadays, so uh, relatively affordable, I, I should say, uh, then you're going to want to look at the XLT because, you know, you get still get that massive 6.7 liter power stroke with all that power. You also get a nice interior for the money. You know, you get your 8-inch SYNC 3 system. Yes, you do not get the 12-inch SYNC 4 system, but you know, still, you still have Apple CarPlay. Yes, it is wired. Yes, it is wired Android Auto as well. Um, but you know, it's still basically the same truck, except you don't have leather and you don't have all the niceties. You still have blind spot monitoring. Um, if, if you don't want the blind spot monitoring, you have this little mirror at the bottom of your mirror right here. That's more of like, kind of like a fish eye type mirror. And it really makes it a lot easier to see exactly what's in your blind spot. And you know, the blind spot monitoring is also really, really nice uh, to have, especially in a vehicle of this size. Um, but you know, just like I've driven like a Lariat, one of these, and just like the Lariat, it's very well insulated from the outside. We're going 50 miles an hour right now. And it's still super quiet in here. And it's actually a very windy day. And on some vehicles, when it's wind, you get one of those big wind gusts, you can kind of hear it. Uh, on the interior you can't hear it really at all I mean I haven't driven this thing like 50,000 miles so I know like the ins and outs of this vehicle but just driving on this test drive um, still it feels very solid and you know the insulation like I said it's, it keeps the inside very very quiet from what's going on on the outside so I really like that one thing that like I said you do not get with the XLT is that you do get that point and stick key you do not get keyless access you don't get push button start uh, but you do have remote start so if that's something you're worried about uh, if you're getting the XLT you're like yeah I want remote start but I don't really care about keyless access or push button start you still get remote start on the XLT um, so that's really nice you also have I believe automatic high beams on this vehicle as well um, but like I said you got your backup camera you do not have a 360 degree view camera you do not have a forward-facing camera but you do have a bed camera 
as well as that backup camera. Still, 10-speed automatic transmission, fantastic transmission, especially when paired to that 6.7 liter power stroke. I feel like it complements the motor very, very nicely. And it feels like you're always in the power band uh, exactly where you wanna be. So that's really, really nice. I really, really like this powertrain. No, I have not driven a um, Duramax yet, one of the new Duramaxes, but I have driven a newer Cummins. And uh, I feel like this is definitely the fastest of the three trucks. And you know, obviously you guys don't really care, I don't think, uh, about how fast these things are. but. I do not have the opportunity to pull a trailer with one of these, so if you guys are wondering about how this thing pulls like a 15,000 pound trailer, I can't really tell you that because I'm not 100% certain. Another thing that I wanted to show you guys was this sticker on the door. I'm going to post a picture of that right here so you guys know just exactly what the max trailer and capability of this thing is uh, because you guys kind of grilled me on that with my F350 Lariat video that I did. You're like, why didn't you show the sticker in the door panel? Uh, and I'll do that in this video so you guys know exactly how much this thing can pull, what the payload capacity is, uh, and stuff like that. But, you know, even for this being an XLT with the FX4 package with the off-road tuned suspension, it still rides very, very nicely. You know, it is a little bit bumpy, uh, but that's kind of what you expect out of, like, one of these trucks. I mean, you're not going to expect the ride of, like, a Lincoln or something like that, but it still rides very, very good. Um, so definitely nothing to complain about uh, ride-wise. It's very, very comfortable. Um, steering, you know, like I said uh, in my F350 video, it's not the most direct steering. Uh, and I think one of you guys commented in the comment section down below, and you guys let me know that the, it's not the most direct steering because you do have that solid front axle. Um, so I have driven a 2500 GMC Sierra, it was not the Duramax, but uh, that steering was definitely a little, a little bit better. That does have the independent front suspension. Um, so yeah, that thing definitely was more of a direct steering than this thing, but this thing's definitely not sloppy by any means. It's just definitely not as direct uh, as that GMC was, but that's not a big deal. Another thing I wanted to mention is that this does have heated seats. Yes, these are cloth seats, but they are heated cloth seats. Uh, and I found myself you do have three levels of adjustability and I found myself adjusting from the third setting which is the max setting that you can have to bring it down to the second setting because these seats do get really really hot so if you guys are in a colder climate uh, and you want to get the XLT uh, the heated seats are awesome uh, definitely no complaints about the heated seats they work very very well um, so I definitely wanted to add that into the video this is only a single zone climate control system so if you're looking for a dual zone climate control system you're going to want to look uh, elsewhere than the xlt uh, you might want to step up to a lariat or something like that um, but if you don't really care about that then this one will do just fine um, but yeah just an overall really nice and solid feeling truck i really like how you have automatic up and down windows in the front i think that's a really nice feature uh, because i think even like on some vehicles uh, of like higher calibers like you'd expect them to have automatic up and down windows on both sides and they do not so i really like how this does have that um, like i said you can extend these mirrors outwards so if you do have like a big trailer or a big fifth wheel uh, something like that that's really wide uh, or really long uh, you can extend those mirrors outward and see just exactly what's going on at the rear end of the trailer and also at the sides of the truck and the sides of the trailer so that's a pretty nice feature to have uh, and I think that's a really good safety feature to have as well, especially if you're pulling big trailers uh, pretty often. But one more thing that I did want to mention, and this pertains to interior comfort, is that these headrests right here, if you put your head back, it really sets your head like in the perfect position that you kind of want your head to be back like on a long road trip. Um, so I, that's another really nice thing. Yes, you cannot uh, adjust the headrest forward, backward, uh, but that's not really a big deal. You can make them go up and down, but they are in a fixed position. So uh, go out, sit in one of these vehicles. You guys might be able to see uh, exactly what I'm talking about, but it's just a really nice headrest and just an overall really very comfortable vehicle. Um, you know, like I said, in many of my Ford videos, the seats are just very, very comfortable. Um, but yeah. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I am gunning for 10,000 subscribers and I can only do that with you guys hitting that subscribe button. So I'd greatly appreciate that. 
Um, like I said, I'm gonna thank you guys again. I know it's kind of annoying because I keep thanking you guys, but seriously, thank you guys so much for helping me hit 1,000 subscribers. Now we're on to 10,000 subscribers, and like I said, in plenty of my videos in the past, after we hit 10,000, we're going for 100,000. Um, another thing that I did wanna mention before this video ends is I have made shirts. So would you guys be interested in buying a shirt, a 703 speed shirt, just like I wear in some of my other videos? Uh, if you guys do, please leave a comment in the comment section down below and then I'll start selling shirts because making these videos isn't cheap and it is not free. So that's just a way that I can keep the channel going, expand to new content and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of today's video and I will see you guys in the next review. Peace.